And uh, Dominic Hasek has seen Division better days. Let's pick up live action for the final moment, second period. Brenda Moore has moved up to take the draw. Lindros has dropped back to play the left point. Peter Svoboda moving it on. Michael Renberg to Rod Brindamore. Half center that one through Craig Muni. Muni number five of that Washington Buffalo defense. Teamed up with period. Gary Galley. Peter Svoboda to Brindamore. In a little deeper. They worked it back to the skates of Brindamore. Tried to set up Lindros and couldn't get it all the way back in time. But now the Flyers have to go back into their own zone to regroup. Peter Svoboda in the exchange with Hextall. Svoboda. On to Rod Brindamore. Charlie Huddy checked by LeClaire as he tried to work back in the net. Look at the four check there by Lindros. Brindamore as well. The flyer defense is not young. They've spent a lot of time in their own end of the ice today. They may be very, very tired looking ahead to the third period. Next ball, way out of the flyer net. Left it on the board. Oh, and he oh, pays the price. Oh, Leslie. boy. Oh, boy. There's something that can turn a hockey game around, and the Flyers hope it doesn't. 8.3 seconds left in the period. Presley has both Buffalo oh. goals. This one oh. shorthanded. Well, just some indecision by Ron Hextall. I mean, it's a long way from five, but it's certainly going to go give Buffalo something to try to build on in the second intermission. Hextall knows he... Had a judgment, in, uh, an error in judgment, rather, and he just didn't get enough on it and gave it right to the Buffalo player, and bingo, it's in the net. And a 5-2 hockey game. Flyers gave up nine shorthanded goals during the season. Buffalo scored 13. And as the period comes to a close, look at this. Next all, not very happy, is he, Mick? Well, he shouldn't be. Well, the Flyers had it looking very easy. Still, they have a three-goal advantage, and that's the story in our game from Pittsburgh. Well, the Penguins have come back to tie things up on goals by Kevin Stevens and Ron Francis. Lots more ahead as we continue with the intermission from Hockey Control. Twenty foot baskets, three hundred point games, one hundred yard courts. In the future, athletes will make the game faster, farther, tougher. But today's athlete can choose new all sport. Fluid replacement, unsurpassed taste, four first quenching flavors. All sport is a body quencher. So before it gets to this, new all sport, the game will never be the same. There is something special about owning a John Deere. You wake up a little earlier on weekends. You skip morning coffee. And you really, really hate it when it rains. From trimmers to lawn and garden tractors, your John Deere dealer has all sorts of ways to make your work more enjoyable. Introducing the special edition Civics from Honda with 16 valve fuel injected engines, Honda's double wishbone suspension, and power assisted rack and pinion steering. Now add air conditioning, AM FM stereo cassette, center console armrest, digital clock, passenger side vanity mirror, full wheel covers, and other special features for a very special edition. So much for so little. So hurry. Would you believe it if I told you this was one of those shows, Jerry? Why is that man beating up these kids? Please don't anybody underestimate my commitment to this game. Can we share uh, some of those stories? I hold the measures. It's sort of freak when I say that. Hey! But, um, hey! 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 It's hey. not about justice in the beginning. It's about conviction. There is so, a perception you don't necessarily think it's correct, I guess. I'm only giving my feeling about it. Get that. inside the story with Dave Hodge. Inside Sports. Weekdays on TSN. Live at the intermission is brought to you by your local McDonald's restaurants. Have you had your break today? Welcome back to TSN Hockey Control. Let's get to second period highlights. And the first stop, Quebec, is the Nordiques try and stay alive against the New York Rangers. Look at this here. Late first period, Rangers power play. Great pass. Messier to Pat Verbeek. He beats Thibault for a 3-2. 
set the lead three two. On to the second period, Wendell Clark's got one goal, just about has two. That one on the low backhand goes by Richter and by the post. Van Nord's in the power play. It's Young to Lefebvre. He fires a point shot wide. Uh, Young gets the rebound and then hits the side of the net. So it is 3-2. Quebec leading through two periods at the Colise. Rangers with a 3-1 series lead. When you're watching this game, it seems that the officials are heading over to look for video review with some frequency. Yeah, jump over, Manji. I, I just want to I'm telling you guys, I'm becoming a strong advocate, me especially, because I think they should go more and more to the review. It's costing a lot of guys goals. It's costing games. It's costing owners a lot of money. And worst, it's costing coaches their jobs. Go to the video, guys, please. It's very obvious. You speak from a little experience on that costing. You had no video back against LA Kings back. Big time. If we had video then, the goal was clearly in. We would have won the game, gone on and won the seventh game. Obviously, won a second Stanley Cup, Cup no doubt. Kept, kept I would have kept my job in Calgary, maybe. Who knows? Go. I'll tell you what. The one thing I didn't understand in the whole uh, foufra about the goal, the disputed goal in the last game, the Quebec Ranger game was why they didn't go to it. Like, they do to go to it so often. And you can, as I understand the rules, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, if it's if the whistle has blown, they can check that on sound up, and that's done fairly frequently this season. Oh, we've seen it regular season games lots of times this year. Why didn't Andy Van Helmen, if he had any element of doubt at all, whether or not it was a little bit late, a little late whistle, go to the video and check it? Well, there was a whole bunch of problems with the play, though. It took them a long time to even figure out that they did have a problem, didn't it? Well, there was huge problems with the play. A lot. Of I don't people... know if Andy knows how to go there. Can we listen to that sound up? Yeah, well, they can. No, I, mean, I don't know. And, and somebody's got to send you in the rule of this, too, because being a coach, I've asked this a thousand times. You go to a referee and say, will you please go to the overhead video? He says, we can't go to it. they got a phone down. So then later on, you see him going and saying, wait a minute, you can't go to the phone. They got a phone down. They got two sets of rules out there. They better get them clarified, too. Yeah, it's going to be uh, Kovalev cams in every race. Just ahead, the Flyers and the Sabres from Philadelphia after two in Pittsburgh. It is the Capitals and the Penguins even at three with one to go. McDonald's presents the NBA Looney Tunes All-Star Showdown. Oh, my God, it's all pretty tear. Oh, birdie! To all these patties, special sauce, all oh, mine! It's not basketball season, it's duck season. Give me that ball. Something real familiar about that bunny. Who do you think you are? Let me show you. Oh, look! Yes, Big Mosh! Have you had your break today? God, it's me, Michael. God! Kim Leger, Esquire. Corey Boissel, Esquire. Presenting the Esquire Watch Collection. Susan Tyler, Esquire. Edward Zosky, Esquire. Canada's fastest growing line of Swiss watches with quartz movement, scratch resistant crystal, starting at $69. Melissa Roy, Esquire. 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 Featuring the golf watch, it comes with a dimpled bezel and handsome golfer's gift set. Esquire Watch, it has your name on it. Richard Zopel, Esquire. Susan Ock, Canadian Olympic silver medalist. To win, you have to push your limits. That leaves my hair sweaty and out of control. So I count on Pert Plus. Some other tune ones just don't work for me. Pert Plus has control-enhancing conditioners that help smooth every strand to leave your hair more manageable. I don't fuss with my hair. Pert Plus gives me manageable hair that's in control. A winning combination for manageable hair. NHL playoff on TSN. Our game rocks. On to the spectrum in Philadelphia now. Flyer fans all revved up for their first taste of a playoff series victory since the 80s. Let's get to the action now. Second period, 2-0 Flyers. Eric Lindros' breakaway goes in too far, banks it off galley, and it is 3-0 Philadelphia. 19 seconds later, it's Patrick Uline from in front, picks up the rebound, gets a couple of whacks at it, and puts it by Dominic Hasek. 4-0. Flyers are off and running. Second period. Hasek here behind the net. He gives it right to John LeClaire. 
fantastic man <laughs> trying to move the net. That only works in street hockey. Uh, five nothing Flyers <laughs> after the half. Later in the period, Doug Bodger shot from the point. Wayne Presley tipped it in front. Nice deflection pass for Ron Hextall. Sabres down down only 5-1. Yeah, now here's Hexy's folly. Presley gets the open <laughs> net here. Hextall gets the... Uh, he tried to knock the net off with his stick <laughs> after the goal. Revenge. All right. It is 5-2 uh, there, but, uh, well, nice goaltending. <laughs> nice, nice goaltending. <laughs> Not of them. And your your goalie Dominic, Dominic Hasek. He gives he gives My new goalie. he gives new meaning to the thing. Now I'm not sure if it's if it's the goalie is. Upset or up net, but he gives new meaning <laughs> to it. I would say. When did he become my goalie? I guess uh, if someone's got to be the guardian angel for Dominic Hashi today. I guess it falls to me. All season long, he's been great, and Wells, he's been sitting over there talking about the dominator, and now Wells, he's a bit of a front runner, and he's laughing at Hashi oh. and saying, "Oh, there he goes." And, that, and I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. If you had Dominic Hashi in net this season, you would be on TSN, but you wouldn't be sitting here. You'd be, I'd in be the a better coach. You'd be I in don't knock Darren Poopa. Poopa did a good I job. Did not Darren Poopa, but let me ask but you one thing. All right. And, and I just don't. Say we're bashing Hashik, but how far has he taken the Buffalo Sabres? Where have they gone? Well, Be honest, Bobby. Where, where have they ever gone, though? Come on. They, they, well, you're telling me Hashik is the all. They won one. The goal. No, I didn't say he's where the end all. Where have they gone? I did not say that he's the end all. Be well. Where's Ray Bork taking the Boston Bruins? But he's he, not a goalie. No, he's not a goalie. But everybody says you can't win without a goalie, and everybody goes out and gets the goaltender. Detroit went out and got Mikey Vernon to hopefully right. take them along. Buffalo figures Hashik can do the job for them. Hey, hey, they're not dead yet. We have it. Let's don't bury them yet. But I mean, a little bit of dirt yeah. falling no, on I them. I agree, but it's his second year in the playoffs. Yeah, and don't get me wrong. Second I like Dominic Hashik as a goalie. Right. He can play for my hockey club anytime he wants to, Bobby. By the way. Yeah, if he'd only. Uh, stay <laughs> he's the net. He's the net alone. Of that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I think you guys both picked Buffalo over Philadelphia. I think we both did. I think yeah. we did. Just to have wings and stars from Detroit after two in Pittsburgh. The Penguins have roared back to tie this thing up, folks. It's 3 3 through 2. Whether you're driving a new car or designing one, you can't be too careful. That's why Dodge Stratus has dual airbags, available anti lock brakes, and multiple beams in the doors. Even the shape of the car is designed for side impact protection. It's nice to know all of that's in here because all this is out there. Dodge Stratus, the cure for performance anxiety. If the choice was yours, you'd wear something casual to work. But in reality, you have to wear steel-toed work boots. So you wear comfortable, lightweight Dakota Aggressor work boots with the safety you need and the all-day comfort you want. So, when work's finished, you're not. Dakota Aggressor Work Boots for men and women only at Mark's Work Warehouse. <laughs> People everywhere are having fun playing and saying Tim Horton. Oh, Roll up the roof. The... <laughs> you could win one of 15 neon sport coupes. I won a neon. Win! 5,000 Sony CD stereos and over 7.5 million Tim Horton's prizes. Thank you. Roll up the rim to win. If it's under the rim, you win. All kinds of cool stuff. So roll up the rim to win today. In a rake in Kamloops plays the future of hockey. Like the great ones before him, time has honed his skills, his precision, his determination, his name. Now his time is here. On the ice for the championship. Tune in to the stars of tomorrow with the excitement of the Memorial Cup Hockey Finals. Major Junior Hockey, Real TV, TSN. The Red Wings control every aspect of their series with the Stars until Game 4 today. Dallas jumped into the lead for the first time in the series. It hasn't been pretty, but the Stars are hanging on. First period, Dallas up 1-0. Kevin Hatcher at the point. Long shot goes in. Power play goal. And it's 2-0 Stars. Some good physical play here. That's Paul Cavallini with a big hip check. And Darren McCarty does the big face plant. He gets up, and he's not quite sure where he is or where he's going or how things are going, but they're not going well right now for big Darren McCarty. Andy Moog solid in the Dallas Nets. Uh, here he stops Fedorov. Fedorov and the Wings frustrated up to now. 
it is still 2-0, a bit of a surprise at reunion so far as the Stars try to avoid elimination. Live at the intermission is brought to you by your local McDonald's restaurants. Have you had your break today? When it comes to lawn and garden, the yards ahead with home hardware. 100% Canadian owned. With 900 dealers coast to coast. Guarantees a great price. Like FedEx 1555 liquid lawn fertilizer. The easy way to get a lush, green, weed-free lawn. Complete with on-pack applicator, it's on sale now. The best names, the best selection, a great price. Plus, lots of friendly advice. Making lawn and garden a walk in the park. Great price, friendly advice at home hardware. of what a camcorder can do for you. After the dance, the funk, the sun, and the fun, you've had a great workout. Your morning routine just took a turn for the better. Get fit with the Reebok Caribbean Workout weekday mornings right here on TSN. Second period scoring summary is brought to you by Midas. Midas, the way it should be. Three in the second period. Stevens got Pittsburgh within a goal, or tied things up, I should say, at 2-2 on the power play. Then Dale Hunter gave Washington the lead once more at 3-2. Ron Francis at 15-42 for Murphy and Stevens. Got Pittsburgh back to even, 3-3 after two. Shots on goal, 10 each in the period. And the Washington Capitals lead 21-18 through two as we get set for the third period in Pittsburgh. And it should be a great one. The Penguins facing elimination finished up very strong, Randy, at the end of the second period. And if ever there was a time for a team to come out and give everything it has for 20 minutes, this is it for the Pens. Well, they certainly will do that. But take a look at the scoring summary. Francis with a goal and two assists. Murphy with two assists. Stevens a goal and assist. They continue to go back to the same players. This is not a well-rounded, organized attack. It's their one big line with their offensive defensemen. That's going to hurt them, whether it's going to hurt them in this game or the game back in Washington will be seen. But if I was Eddie Johnson, I'd be very concerned about the fact that my second, third, and fourth lines aren't producing the way that you have to produce if you want to win in the Stanley Cup. Well, the crowd's trying to do its part out there at least. Play underway in the third period. Washington three, Pittsburgh three. Capitals lead the series three games to one. Reg it out to play it. Christich picks it off. Hits a leg and bounces into the Washington zone. Yager is after it. He scored as pretty a goal as you'll ever see back in the first. Off to Francis. Quick shot. Off the glove. But Perry centered it out in front now and knocked away to the corner. Levanka's pass bounces up in the air and he gloves it out to center ice. Alt Samuelson back to Shell. It changes for both teams just 35 seconds into the period. Long shot on Carey. In there quickly, McKecker. Crowd getting on young Jim Carey now. See if they can get under his skin. Here's McKecker and throws it in front. Sandstrom couldn't get a stick on it. Dale Hunter starts the other way for Washington. Mike Eagles with defenseman Callie Johansson ahead of the play. Now McKechnie loses it. Sandstrom knocks it ahead. This is Robitaille all alone. Weak shot wide. Murphy waits for some help. Sends it into the corner. Troy Murray is there. Watched by Gonchar. That shot by Sandstrom is blocked. And here come the Capitals. Two on two. Now Hunter's at the end of the long shift. So he rifles it in and heads to the bench. Francois LaRue gets a little careless with it. Fires it right through the crease almost. 
Sandstra tries to clear it out. That hits the skate. And the rule will start over behind his own net. LaRue had a bad giveaway in the first that led to the first Washington goal. The Capitals have it again. Now LaRue takes down his man Keith Jones. Capitals still in there though. Juno throws it in front. Larry Murphy to Sandstrom and finally the Penguins clear. Now the Penguins on a change there. Lucky not to get caught with too many men on the ice as Sandstrom touched that time. Very slow change for the Penguins there and that could very easily be called for a two-minute penalty. Roger ahead of the play. Pass too far. Capitals had a penalty for too many men on the ice back in the second. Barubi's out there now for the Capitals. Offside as Chris Joseph couldn't keep it in. Now both goaltenders have been tested in this game. The shots are 21 20 for the Capitals. Reggett back in there for Barrasso and Jim Carey again getting the start for the Caps. Well, and this game really comes down to it. 17 minutes, 34 seconds. Which team can mount the most aggressive offensive attack, get into the faces of these goaltenders, get those shots on net from your defensemen, get the rebounds. That's the beauty of this game. A number of one-on-ones all through the ice. Of course, it's always interesting to watch the most dangerous position, and that's right in front of those two goaltenders. And a number of the goals today have come not so much with scrambles in front, but a lot of traffic in front, which left the goaltender on either side helpless. Well, and early in the game, Washington dominated there, but the Penguins have come back very well in the last period to take over momentum on it. Cleared by Alf Samuelson down into Washington territory. Back is Joe Ricci. Watched by Iago. This is Pavanka with Barubi, and Barubi's offside at the Pittsburgh Blue Line. Ethan Allen for the final day is the early spring sale. Ethan Allen, three locations, McMurray, Monroeville, Michael and Michael Pavanka starting out very slowly this year, but ended up being the, the third highest goal scorer and point getter for the, the Washington Capitals. He was out on the ice at the same time as that real star, the best offensive player in the NHL, Yarmir Yager. You know, is when I continue to watch Yager play, he reminds me of a player I played against a long time ago, and Alexander Yakushev, number 15 of the old Russian national team. He had such a large wingspan when he came down, you didn't know whether you were checking a one-on-one -on -one with a hockey player or a 747. And Yager, you can see when he does stick handle, it's not just with his stick, it's with his upper body, and that's why he has such great lateral movement. Well, there's some great individual players in this series. Bondra led the league in goals, Francis led the league in assists, and Yager won the Art Ross. we have got a number of the best offensive players in the league right here in this series. And after saying that, we'll see which is the best team, and none of that comes into play. It's a right. six-man effort on the ice. Thomas Sandstrom into Washington territory, deep into the corner, robotized in front of the net. Carey knocks it back into the corner. McEachern goes after it, but the Capitals have it. A giveaway now. McIver keeps it in. Into the face-off circle. McEachern's pulled down. No call. And here come the Caps. Ricky. Shoot in off the corner boards. Kelly Miller looking for it. Reggett out of his net. And into the crowd. Face-off in Pittsburgh territory. 16-28 left in the third. The Penguins are fighting for their playoff lives. They're tied at three. When I was a kid, they said I couldn't punch my way out of a paper bag. But who wants to fight a paper bag anyway? Because inside a bag like this, you'll find a great Mr. Sub sandwich. And if you call the 800 number on the bag, you could win a Bauer inline skate package from Source for Sports or a playoff party catered by Mr. Sub, or you could bag the grand prize, a trip or two to the playoff finals. I don't think so. So don't fight it, get a Mr. Sub. Call the 800 phone number and you could bag a great prize. is unleashed to create a work of art. Introducing the Acura TL series, a new spirit of touring sedans. Acura, designed with purpose, driven by passion. Most captioning this period, courtesy Apple Auto Glass, with exclusive Bond for Life installations, guaranteed safer by 130 Apples coast to coast. Nice day here in Pittsburgh and inside Civic Arena. 
The atmosphere is building. 16-28 left in the third of a 3-3 tie. If Washington wins, the series is over. If the Penguins win, these two teams go back to Landover for game six. Reggett holds on. Dan, we talked a little bit earlier about the inexperience of some of the defensemen of the Pittsburgh Penguins, and when one miscue is made, especially in a 3-3 game, how devastating that can be. Take a look, Francois LaRue and Chris Joseph out on the ice together. Eddie Johnson maybe knows something more than we, but I'd be very nervous, especially with someone like a Samuelson or a Murphy sitting on the bench. I would usually try to break those two up to make sure you've got one player that understands his defensive responsibilities uh, for sure. You'd expect as the game goes along that the Samuelsons and Larry Murphy and Norm McIver, those four would do most of the work back there for Pittsburgh. This is Troy Murray in for the Penguins, tries to get it behind the net. Joe Mullen is in there as well. Mullen and Cullen have been quiet in this game. They're on the number two line for the Pens. Three on two for the Cavs. Juno in for Connor Walchuk to the front of the net. Rob Pearson draws a crowd. Connor Walchuk doing good work behind the net. Pearson goes in to help. Doesn't see the puck. Now Joe Mullen has it for Pittsburgh. And dumps it out to center ice. Hudson looking for it. Jim Johnson there for the Capitals. LaRue just dumps it in. Right to Johnson, though. Now LaRue's got to hustle back. There was some space open there, but Connor Walchuk couldn't pick up the pass. Changes for both teams. Francis sends it into the Washington zone, and Yager holding on to the stick of Bondra's in there. Tries to throw it in front and does. Back to Shell Samuelson. Can't get a shot away. Stevens in the corner along with Francis. Yager's down. Yager again holding the stick of Joe Riki. The Penguins, on a number of occasions in this game, have tried to draw penalties by holding the stick of a Washington player. Now back to the capital. Shell Sanderson takes over for the Pens. He's in Pittsburgh territory, and Stevens sends it out and down the ice. Icing will be called on Pittsburgh. Two left in the third here in Pittsburgh. The Capitals and Penguins still tied at three. If it doesn't have spirit, it's not worth doing. Some of last night's stars in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Aaron Fleury with four goals. Shanahan and Actual Hacker for the Blues, and Eddie Belfort came to play in Toronto last night. All three of those series now tied two games apiece. Five teams face elimination today and tonight. In the playoff run, Robitaille tips it out for Pittsburgh. Here's McEachern with Murphy and Sandstrom. That's too far. Capitals take over. Sandstrom at the blue line along with Hunter. Here comes Eagles for Washington. 3-3 three, three, tie in the third. Six players along the near boards. McKechnie is in there, so it's Hunter naturally. Sandstrom with Hunter, Murphy, and now finally a whistle. Car trouble after the game. Triple A will provide on the slot emergency roads. Not the kind of guy you want to spend five, six, or seven games playing against in the series. Well, you sure don't. Not only can he beat you up in the corners, but he can also beat you up in the score, uh, the score sheet as well. Interesting, though, he's getting lots of help out there. Kelly Miller has skidded miles out there. And Mike Eagles, interesting enough, a real grinder out there. Two assists, four shots, and plus five over this uh, series. And I think if you look back on it, it's not going to be the goal scorers. It's going to be the second, third, fourth liners that will make the difference between a win and golf season in the near future. <laughs> Now the Penguins, of course, lost out on their golf games back in 91 and 92, and they won the Stanley Cup, but in 93, a second-round loss. Last year, the Capitals took them out of the first round, and they were one away from doing the same thing here in 1995. And the Pittsburgh zone, Joe Juno looking for help, drops it back for Jones, picked off, and Johansson can't keep it in, back out to center ice. Hudson punches Jones. Now on the near side, Joe Mullen chases after it. Carey plays it off for Johansson. Johansson falls hard into the end boards. 
Troy Murray's in there. Johansson's okay. Mullen battling him. And now the Capitals break free with Juno. Gonchar's with him. Onside, Juno waits for help. The puck lies free for a moment. Jones keeps it in, but only briefly. Now Mullen with Hudson. Mullen with room to shoot. And a save by Carey. Clears it off to the corner. Mullen tries to pull it in front. Off Samuelson gets free. And Carey gives up a rebound, but gathers it back in himself to keep the game tied at three. Little Joey Mullen there. The first American-born player to score 1,000 points. A member of three Stanley Cup champions in 89 in Calgary, 91 and 92. A nice shot coming down the side, using his teammate as a as a bit of a, a, a screen there. He follows up, coming around. Some good work by Joe Mullen, and the Pittsburgh Penguins need the Mullins and the Cullens, their second, third, fourth liners, to come out with good efforts like that. Mullen yet to score against the Capitals in this series. The same can be said for John Cullen. He has but one assist. Novanka, Bondra, and Christie out there again for Washington. And for one of the rare times today, the Francis line is out there for the Penguins without Dale Hunter and his line on the ice for the Capitals. Francis, Yager, Stevens out there against Washington's top scoring line. Let's see what happens. Samuelson does a nice job to keep it in as he's fallen to the ice. Now behind the net for Christich. Takes a hit from Stevens where the Capitals have some skating room. Three to center ice. Michael Pavanka loses it. And now back the other way for the Penguins. Yager with Francis and Samuelson. Oh, Samuelson misfired on the shot. Sharp angle now. Throws it in front. Francis could grab the rebound. Back come the Capitals. Christich throws it in front. They score. Peter Bondra gives the Capitals the lead. Four to three. It was just a matter of time. The man who led the NHL in goals with 34 this year gets a one-time shot at half the net and finishes it off for a 4-3 lead. But this play started a long way back, as you can see right here. A great advancing pass. Now the defenseman has to play the two-on-one. And what a nice, sweet one-timer. And a guy that's scoring that many goals in the regular season isn't going to miss a shot like that. Alt Samuelson, you can see him trying to get back into the play. He moved up on offense, couldn't get back in time. And Ken Reggett shows his displeasure as the Penguins now with 12.46 left for the third time in this game have fallen behind. Christich gets the only assist. The goal coming at 7.14. 4-3 Washington. See if the Pens have one more comeback in them. See if the crowd has enough momentum left in them to try to get the Penguins moving again. At times they've been very loud, and at times they've been very quiet during this game. Berube to the line, not out. Murphy keeps it in. Hunter is there, and he'll bring it out. He's got a couple of goals in this game. Berube and McKeckard really going at it on the near boards. Kelly Miller in there chasing after it. McKeckard just blindly throws it down all the way to Jim Carey. Gives it up to Jim Johnson. McIver has to chase it back on the ice with Chris Joseph. There as Randy mentioned, breaking up that tandem of Joseph and LaRue. Mullen, fanned on the pass. Capitals have it. Now Joseph. LaRue dumps it in. And now that duo is back together again. LaRue was just waiting for McIver to come to the bench so he could get on the ice and we'll have a stoppage in the Washington zone. 11.44 left in the third. The Capitals lead the series 3-1. They lead the game 4-3. An ordinary hamburger and your banquet burger deluxe. Either is good depending on what you want, which brings us to Midas Mufflers. At Midas, they have top quality Midas Mufflers guaranteed for as long as you own your car. Or they have the Economizer at a very reasonable price and guaranteed for one full year. The point is, you get some choice in the menu which is important, I like choice. I have one to make right now. I've made it. It 
just the way it should be. Midas. The Penguin bench here, you can see, rather despondent after that fourth Washington goal. You know, how many times in the past have we seen in a hockey game where a team is forcing, forcing, their, their first defenseman goes in a little bit offensively to try to create something and get their own fourth goal, and then all of a sudden, the tables are turned, back on a two-on-one for a nice, easy goal. Ken Reggett had no chance on that. He showed his displeasure, but really, when we look at the series, that displeasure is because of the lack of united force defensively that Pittsburgh has had. That's their weakness, no question, and it's showing in this game. And the Penguins have been battling back from deficits constantly in this series. Jim Carey in net for Washington. The Capitals had a 5-0 lead in Game 3. They won 6-2. They had a 1-0, 2-1 leads in Game 4. Then scored the last four goals of the game to win going away 6-2. And this is the third lead in this game for Washington. The Penguins have not led at all in this series since Game 2. Let's have a good look here, too, Dan. We see Yager and the big Pittsburgh line out. We don't see their checking line, Kelly Miller and uh, Hunter and those fellas. I'd imagine uh, if John uh, Jim Schoenfeld has a look at this and he has anything to say, they're going to make a quick change. Let's see if the back they do it. John Feld has done a great job getting the Capitals to believe in themselves, getting them motivated. Now Gonchar heading back to the bench. He'll be replaced by Sylvain Cote. Rob Pearson and Jim Schoenfeld among those upset about that decision by Magoo. Johansson off the boards, not out, a chance right in front, Yager scores! Tie game! bench only a few moments ago there's a few more smiles a little more intensity and that's what the superstars do boy when you have a guy like a Gretzky or Messier or Yager they can turn turn the tide and he certainly did with not only a nice and lucky bounce what a great way to finish off that play 11 20 left in the third the arena is alive again face off to the left of Reagan Pavanka for the Capitals and Francis still out there for the Penguins, draw one by the Cavs, off the goalpost. Cote got a shot through, now he tries to fire another one through, big bounce and they score! Bondra with his second, and just like that, it's 5-4 Washington. What twists and turns there have been in this game. And what a scrappy bunch of players these Capitals are. They take it on the nose with a great play by Yager. First 
first post. Unbelievable shot. Here we can see it right directly off the post. It comes back, but the play's not finished. A difficult uh, clearing play there. A smart play by Cote, and of course, right off the skate and on to the person stick that you want, Peter Bondra, 34 goals this year. What a big one right there. Washington goals the playoffs. Peter Bondra. Just like Yager, his second of the game and fifth of the playoffs. And the Penguin bench has gone through a lot of ups and downs in the last minute and 35 seconds. Three goals in the last minute and 35. The Caps take the lead. The Pens tie it up. The Caps take the lead again. Bondra from Cote at 8.49 of the third. Capitals lead 5-4. And if the Penguins want to force a sixth game, they'll have to come back for the fourth time in this game. They've never led. Jim Johnson for Washington. Has Eagles. Has Miller. Miller with the puck. Bounce pass off the boards for Eagles. Watched by McKechnie. Murphy's in there as well. Eagles taken down. The puck is free. Larry Murphy has it. And now the Penguins start away. McIver. Sandstrom. In front is Robitaille and hits the skate of Ken Klee and almost bounced into the net. Carey had to be sharp. Now Murphy avoids Magoo, looks for the puck. And Sandstrom in there. He's being pinned up against the boards. Magoo sees it. No penalty. Miller can't get it out. It's cleared into the stands inside the Washington blue line. We've got great action here at the Civic Arena. Three goals in the last couple of minutes. The Capitals lead by four. Penguins, they know that if this team is knocked out of the playoffs in the first round again, that a number of these players, Randy, will probably not be back in Penguin uniforms next year. No question. I'll tell you what, too, Dan, these Pittsburgh Penguin fans are going to go home tonight. They're going to put their, their legs up in, uh, in fatigue. Every minute they're up cheering a goal. The next minute they're down slumping in their seat. This has been an emotional game. What a great playoff game. And of course, that's the beauty of the NHL playoffs. There's nothing to hold back for. These players are going real hard. But as we say, it just seems like the Washington Capitals offense and defensive strategy is a little bit more consistent and a little deeper through the lineup. The Capitals a younger team as well. Twelve players of the 20 dressed for the Penguins today are in their 30s. Only five of the Capitals. One of those 30-somethings for the Pens. Troy Murray blasting it in off the end glass. Mullen chases after it. Capitals bring it right back out. Anna Walsh. Stripped at center ice. And now Joseph to LaRue. And here come the Penguins. Carey out to play it. Avoids Mullen. Capitals clear. Anna Walsh just to center ice. LaRue takes over for Pittsburgh. He's had a couple of adventures with the puck in this game. Dumps it in safely this time. And again, Carey plays it up on the side boards. Shell Samuelson pitching in, and Ulf is back for Pittsburgh. Here's Yager. Yager with some room. Yager held onto the puck forever. Carey got a piece of it, tipped it over top of the net. Yager looking for the hat trick. Shell Samuelson beats Christich to the puck. And the far boards for Ulf Samuelson. Stevens had his head up, avoided a check from Ricky, who was beginning to line him up. Now a little bit of room in neutral territory for the Capitals. Here's Bondra. He's got two goals. Behind the net now. Christich is in front. Alt Samuelson hits Bondra up against the glass. Four players in there. And we've got a stoppage in play. We're heading to Dallas for an update now with John Wells. All right, Dan, it is 2-0. Stars leading the Red Wings in the third. Here's Mike Donnelly trying the wrap around here. That doesn't quite get by Vernon, but that one does by Corey Millen. It is now 3-0 stars in the lead in the third. 
Eight and a half minutes left in the third. Yaramir Yager is doing everything he can to keep the Penguins in this one. That's the story right there for the Penguins. Yager's got two goals, and Ron Francis on the right has a goal and three assists, and Randy Yager very nearly had the hat trick on that last trip down the ice. Look at the composure of this young 23-year-old going across the slot like that. Great play by the defenseman, Sylvain Cote, to get the stick on there. This Yager, we talk about the age of some of the Pittsburgh Penguin players. I'll tell you what, he puts in a lot of youthfulness in that offensive power just by being out there. It's a beautiful example of how creative an offensive force can be. This Yarmir Yager, a star in the NHL for many years to come. Let's get another quick update. Let's check in on the Sabres and Flyers. And from the spectrum, the Sabres have their third straight goal. This one from McGilney, who's down the wing and winds up with this shot. Beating Hextall, top corner. Now 5-3, Sabres closing in. Buffalo making a game of it. It was 5-0 Philadelphia at one point. The Sabres trying to fight off elimination like the Penguins are here at the Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. Jim Carey has led in four, but his team has the lead. The shots are 25-24, favoring Pittsburgh. And take a look at the line matchups now. Eddie Johnson, not too worried about this, but we see the big line of the Pittsburgh Penguins and who's on the ice, the Eagles. Hunter and Miller, they're going to throw everything at Yarmir Yager and friends to try to keep them off the scoreboard. Eagles and Francis on the draw. There hasn't been a penalty called yet in the third period. Face off to the left of Reagan. One by the Cavs. Cote. Yager beats him there. Ahead for Stevens. This line's going to see all kinds of time for the next eight minutes. Francis Stevens does a great job to get the pass and scores! What a play by Kevin Stevens! This game is tied again! Jump by Stevens to take the pass there. It was a little bit off the ice from Francis, and then to still have the presence of mind to go to the backhand and beat Carey. 5-5. Five, five. It was 2-1 Washington after one. It was 3-3 three, three after two, and it's now 5-5. Five, five. And listen to the noise here at the Civic Arena. and Yager assists on the goal. Now the Capitals are back in there again as Reagan clears it away. And Rock Francis has five points in this game. Here come the Pens again. Sandstrom tees it up in the save by Carey. It's tied here in Pittsburgh. Let's see how the Stars are doing with the win. Well, Detroit finally gets to Andy Moog in the third period. It's Aries shot, and Darren McCarty is in front to tip this one in. That made it three to one. But 21 seconds after that, Greg Adams winds up and gets his second of the hockey game quickly. Dallas has a three-goal lead once more. It's 4-1 in the third. Pittsburgh. The Penguins have come back to tie the Capitals on four different occasions in this game. They've yet to have a lead. They'll need to get one if they plan on forcing game number six. Capitals lead the series three games to one. They eliminated the Penguins in six last year. Seven minutes and 20 seconds left in the third as Washington clears it in. Now the crowd is as noisy as it's been the entire afternoon. Hudson 
into the Washington zone. Carey misplayed the puck, but the Capitals are back quickly. Here's Joey Juno with Connor Walchuk into the shift. Juno's going to take as much time as he can. Always patient, finds a teammate. And Juno to the back. Dumped into the Pittsburgh zone, back is all Samuelson. Christich on him. This line has been great in the third period. Bonder's got a couple of goals. Kote. Stevens gives him a bump. Alt Samuelson down in the corner. Bondra looking for him. Pavanka can't find it. Stevens tips it over the glass. Another update. Let's find out about the Flyers and Sabres with John Wells. Dan, they're scoring in bunches everywhere. This is from the Spectrum. 5-3 Flyers in the lead. Brindamore, nice pass to Kevin Deneen. And he has Hasek one more time. That makes it 6-3 Flyers with a three-goal advantage once more. Yarmir Yager, a big part of the story here in Pittsburgh. He and Kevin Stevens each have two goals for the Penguins. Peter Bondra, Dale Hunter each with a pair for the Capitals. John was right. The goals are coming to come in bunches all around the NHL today. It's 5-5 here. 6.33 left in the third. This has been a terrific hockey game. Yager, one on two. That hasn't stopped him before today. Francis up into the play. Yager with a quick shot. It's blocked. Stevens follows up. The backhander saved by Carey. Francis throws it in front. And who's there but Yager toward the net. A bounce over to Samuelson. Sharp angle shot. It's blocked. He has it back. In front of the net now. And Bondra finally clears. You can feel the excitement of the fans. When Yarmir Yager touches the puck, almost reminiscent of Guy Lafleur years ago in the Montreal Forum, these folks are excited and they've got all kinds of reason to be. Yager's had a superb game today. Inside six minutes to play. Every time the Penguins have come back to tie, the Capitals have bounced back with a goal to take the lead. This is offside on a loop Robitaille. That doesn't make the fans happy here in Pittsburgh. Five forty-six left in the third, and all kinds of drama here in Pittsburgh. Well, we've seen just about anything. What do you think about a penalty shot? Maybe <laughs> there's not much more that we can add to a game like this. Back and forth play. Pittsburgh taking Washington off their game. The goaltenders coming up with big saves. But really, it's the offensive stars that have dominated today. And the way each team has shown its ability to bounce back. With 5.46 left in the third, you get the feeling the only way to settle this kind of a game is in overtime because then whoever does the score won't have a chance to bounce back. But every time one team scores, the other team answers. Goals and bunches in this game. Hunter on the ice for the Capitals. Face off in the Pittsburgh zone. McKechnie on the draw for the Penguins. Up by Washington. Johnson is shot. Reagan a little shaky on that, but he made the save. Puck bounces to the corner. Over time, can't grab it at center ice. Hunter. Now Eagles grabbed by Murphy. Tipped down into the Washington zone by McKechnie, who heads to the bank. Dale Hunter. At center ice, it's tipped away by Murray. Off for overtime. The well, let's go Ed's chance begins again. Murphy to the Washington line, dumps it in, he'll head to the bench, back to get it is John Sharp for the Capitals. Clearing pass. This is Connor Walchuk with Barubi and Juno. Barubi the backhander, save Reagan. Now Gonchar pitching in. Juno to the front of the net, nobody there. Penguins will try to clear, and they do. Call coming up on the Penguins. 4:41 left in the third in a 5-5 tie. Today's game story is brought to you by Para Paints. Para painting Canada since 1915. Dale Hunter got the Capitals going early. He has two goals. Bondra's got a couple of big ones for the Capitals. Francis and Yager have been a huge story for the Penguins. They're the big reason these two teams are still tied in bond. Where were you on the night of the 15th? I have no comment. Hmm, did you ever see the victim before today? 
I, uh, have no comment. Isn't it true that the victim was, in reality, your mother? Uh, I have Order. no comment. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really sorry. Pittsburgh, Jim Schoenfeld of the Washington Capitals are tied with the Pittsburgh Penguins at five apiece. More pressure on the Pens, obviously. They lose it, they're out. But the last thing that the Capitals want to do is give a team like the Penguins, which knows how to win, another chance to win. Absolutely, and here we see on the other side of the coin, Eddie Johnston still going with his young defenseman, pairing up LaRue and Joseph, both, of course, quality defensemen, but not with the experience that some of the Samuelson uh, defensemen, uh, um, uh, Murphy and so forth, have, and it might just give them some trouble. Hey, Peter Bondra came close to the hat trick right there. Could have been the backbreaker. He's behind the net now. Kristich in front, so is Pavanka. Bondra with some room all of a sudden, hit the side of the net. Now, Bondra skating well. He's had a great third period. Pavanka in front. Kristich got a stick on it. Couldn't get much on the shot. Reggett is there. This line's been great in the third period. Shell <laughs> Samuelson. Up there along with Robitaille, Troy Murray, Alf Samuelson, and Ron Francis is now. It appears Francis is double shifting, not out there with Yaga right now. He's taking a shift with Robitaille and Murray. Haven't seen a lot of Cullen and Mullen here late in the third period. Eddie Johnston not happy with the way they played. They've been pretty quiet. Play at center ice. Shot in by Ricky. Alt Samuelson bangs it right back out to center ice. Capitals on a line change. Crowd wanted another too many men on the ice penalty. Four minutes to go in the third. A 5-5 tie. Shell Samuelson is down. He is down and appears to be in pain just outside the Pittsburgh blue line. Samuelson wants a penalty. We'll find out when we come back. First, an update from Quebec. Here's Scott Young with the empty net opportunity for the Nordiques. Time running out on the Rangers who fall behind by two goals on the empty netter. Quebec may live to fight another day. Michelle Samuelson still pleading his case. But there should be some kind of an infraction against the Capitals. Let's watch Pavonka. He's well, got a case. He sure does, rightfully so. Pavonka just dumping the puck in with a little bit off balance. Was worried about the big hit. How do you protect against the big hit? Not like that, that's for sure. And he should be off for at least two. Shell Samuelson, not usually a complainer, but it's easy to complain where you, you lose a couple of teeth and you're bleeding from the mouth. The discussion still going on at center ice. Referee Mike McGoo is in the middle of it all. Francis is there pleading his case. Pavonka innocently standing over by the Washington bench wanting to be as far away from the referee right now as possible but very worried I'll tell you what if he gets a five minute penalty with 354 left to go in the third period that could be a very very prime opportunity for the Pittsburgh Penguins the fans living and dying with every moment of this game now no point did Magoo signal a penalty there will be no penalty as Francis skates away from Magoo. There hasn't been a penalty called in the third period. And inside, four minutes to go in the third period of a tie playoff game. As you can see, the blood streaming down the chin of Samuelson. As he is living at Magoo. Well, in a situation like that, too, if the referee didn't see it, the linesman have the opportunity to go over and say, look, I saw that play. It was an obvious infraction. Let's make the call. It's a proper one. He shouldn't be making mistakes like this and missing it. A, a, a flagrant, flagrant high step. Let's take another look. Kavanka off bounce a little bit. Worried about getting hit himself. Way up, right over the cheekbone of Shell Samuelson. I don't think it was intentional, but it certainly comes into the area of, of extremely careless getting that stick up. And well, careless, but you know what? When you play the game of hockey, you have to learn how to give a hit, but you also have to learn how to take a hit. Kavanka right there wasn't willing to take that to pay the price to take a good shoulder right in the chest. And fortunate. Rich green is specially blended for harsh face elimination. 
Face off to the right of Reagan. Troy Murray looks like he's going to get a lot of the important face off work along with Ron Francis down the stretch. The Augers out on the ice again. Dale Hunter on the draw for the Capitals. One by Murray. Cleanly. McIver for Francis, who has five points in this game. Banged right back in by the Capitals. Eagles has had a nice game for Washington. Bumps with Murphy. Miller pushed in on the end boards. Murphy is there. So is Hunter looking for the puck. Hunter finds it. Murphy finds him. Now Eagles and Yager. A lot of work on the boards. These have been the battles the Capitals have been winning so far in this series. Back comes McIver and Murphy. Two defensemen in there for Pittsburgh. Now McIver heads back. Stevens waits for help. Throws it in front. Sharp angle shot. Save. Carry. Puck is loose. McIver doesn't shoot it. Johansson watching him. Yager behind the net. Stevens is there as well. Three players go down. The puck is underneath them. 305 left in the third. And some pushing and shoving behind the net. John Wells has an update from Philly. And it's official from the Spectrum this afternoon. The Sabres are the first team eliminated from the Stanley Cup tournament. The Philadelphia Flyers, the first team to move on. So the Flyers win their first playoff series. Six to four is the final today. So the first team is eliminated from the Stanley Cup playoffs. The Buffalo Sabres are gone. The Flyers win that one in five. Dallas has a three-goal lead on Detroit. They look like they will stave off elimination. Quebec leading the Rangers. The Penguins and Capitals going down to the wire here in Pittsburgh. Well, and there you see that stalwart defenseman, Yarmir Jager, his two defensemen going up on a three-on-two break. It's not often that you'll have an offensive threat like Jager playing defense, but he said, gee, I'm going to stay back. I see three of my guys in front of me. I better make sure that we don't give Washington their sixth goal tonight. A little bit of debris on the ice down in the Washington zone as the fans are becoming increasingly disenchanted with both referee Mike Magoo and the Washington players in general. Jim Schottfeld at the Capitol bench has gotten a great effort from his players again, but they're in a battle today with the Penguins. Taking a look at those Capitol forwards, you're wondering exactly what they're saying. Not a lot of experience in that lineup today. The goals keep coming around the NHL. Let's go to Quebec. Well, no more goals, but I can tell you it is final as the Quebec Nordique stage a spirited display and beat the New York Rangers at La Colise. This means the series heads back to New York City. Quebec with a solid 4-2 victory over the Rangers today. All right, John, thank you. Another win. Another final, a win for the Nordique. Game six between the Nordique and Rangers coming up. Penguins hoping for game six in this series. And the noise picks up. A little bit of line juggling here. You can see Eddie Johnson's got what he wants. He's got Yager on the ice. And Dale Hunter's nowhere to be found. Big line against big line. Francis and Tavanka on the draw. One by Francis. Samuelson plays it off the end boards and very nearly got it to bounce back out right into the crease. Nice try there by Samuels. Riki. Inside three minutes to go in the third. A 5-5 tie. Buck cleared down into the Pittsburgh zone. No ice and back to get it to Shell Samuelson. Now they'll have to clear the zone. And with Samuelson sitting on top of Konowalczyk, we'll have to stop it. Dan, what a great play by Al Samuelson there. He's got the puck. There's a... Washington Capitol defender coming right at him. Rather than dumping it, he knows his own rink. He practices here every day. He dumps it in. Just about gets the goal from behind the net. Let's get another update now, this time from Dallas. And who would have thought the Dallas Stars would live to fight another day, but they will. Solid trouncing of the Red Wings at Reunion today. Dallas into a 2-0 lead early. They held that through, too, thanks to Andy Moog. And the final is in. It is 4-1 Dallas over Detroit. Stars' first win in the playoffs. Well, so all the afternoon action is done with the exception of the Penguins and the Capitals. The fans here in Pittsburgh have gotten their money's worth today, that's for sure. 
Two minutes and 40 seconds left in the third. It's Washington 5, Pittsburgh 5. The Capitals have led on four separate occasions. And each time, the Penguins have come back to tie. Ron Francis has five points. Yager has two goals for the Pens. Hanna Walchuk shot is wide. Bondra and Hunter each with a couple of goals for the Capitals. If Washington wins, the Penguins are done. If Pittsburgh wins, there will be a game six. Penguins in white, Capitals in red, Reggett. Long pass for Yager. Picked off by the Caps at center ice. Kristich looking for it. Has some help now. This is Cote with a shot and a save by Reggett. A little bit of stick work on Keith Jones at the end of the play as well. We're going to be here for a while yet, maybe, if there's no goal in the next minute and 58 seconds. There's a lot of hockey still to come on TSN. NHL game night begins at 7 o'clock Eastern with John Wells, Bob McKenzie, Terry Crisp. A half an hour getting you caught up on today's action and set for tonight's action, which you can see here on TSN, the New Jersey Devils and the Boston Bruins. The Devils lead that series three games to one. Paul Romanuk and Gary Green will be with you for that huge game between the Devils and the Bruins. 158 left in the third. What a game this has been. Norm McIver. The center ice gets over the red line, dumps it in. Carey plays it around on the boards. Kept in by Murphy toward the net, a rebound. And Carey leaves it for Cote. Watched by Robitaille. McKechnie is out there as well for the Penguins. And it's urging the Capitals to get moving. McIver and Murphy back on the point. Kristich doing a little four checking. Kick for McKechnie, bounce over his stick. And Jim Johnson dumps it in for Washington. This is onside. Miller. He's had a pretty strong game. Off for Kristich. Looks in front. Passes block. Gets it back. Behind the net now. But it's only Larry Murphy there to pick it up. Fire over tie. Down the ice. No ice. Penguins will go for a change. One minute to go in the third. Pittsburgh and Washington tied at five. Johansson is taken down. And offside is the call with 58 seconds left in the third. Shell Samuelson back on the ice after being cut earlier on a play that infuriated the Penguins because there was no call. Well, and he's feeling a little bit nasty out there, it looks like, taking Johansson into the board head first there. That was a big turning point, Dan, that's for sure. If that call is made, we may be looking at no overtime compared to what it looks like right now, only 58 seconds tied 5-5. The Penguins down to two lines pretty much in the final really seven or eight minutes of this game. You'll see Francis, Yager, Stevens, Robitaille, McKechnie, and Troy Murray. Those have been the six forwards Eddie Johnston's been using. John Cullen, Joe Mullen, and Thomas Sandstrom haven't been seen in a few minutes. Now Stevens jumps across. Still 58 seconds left as we wait for the faceoff just inside the Washington Blue Line. Vivanka on the draw for the Capitals. Finally, the puck is dropped. The Capitals win it. Kristich with Pavanka. Shoots it in off the end boards. It bounces right through the crease, and Reagan had to be careful on that. Samuelson goes flying. Now Francis tries to clear it ahead to Stevens. Watched by Johansson. Tries to center it. Nobody there. Back out to center ice. Penguins on a change. 35 seconds left. Francis with Stevens. Yager to the front of the net. That's too far in front of him. Couldn't get it. Tries to battle for it. Kept in. Murphy's got room to shoot. Through a couple of legs and just wide on the far side. Stevens is dumped in front. 20 seconds left. Capitals on their heels a little bit now. The Penguins are coming on. Johansson does a nice job to get the puck down into the Pittsburgh zone. Less than 10 seconds to go. Maybe one more rush for Pittsburgh. Play at center ice now. Five seconds left. Robitaille offside with 0.6 of a second left in the third period. Randy, I think we can say with some certainty this game is headed to overtime. We are. Well, the fans have had their money's worth and more for the first three periods. Let's see how much more they get to enjoy these two great teams. Boy, 
head to head in this battle for supremacy in the first round of the Stanley Cup. The Penguins trying to avoid elimination in the hands of the Capitals for the second time in two years. The first four games of this year's series have mirrored last year's. Washington wins game one, Pittsburgh two, Washington three and four. Last year, Pittsburgh won five and forced a sixth before the Capitals won. And this game is going to overtime in a 5-5 five, five tie. Now the Penguins going with just two lines for the last eight minutes in overtime. Do they go back to three? Well, they may, but you know what? You start shortening your bench like that, and it's going to affect you, especially when you've got some age. Let's see what happens in the overtime. Eddie Johnston and the Penguins headed to overtime against Jim Schoenfeld and the Capitals. We're not done yet. It's 5-5 five, five at the end of regulation. Pittsburgh and Washington, a great playoff game here at the Civic Arena. Simon is first, Young his third for Quebec. Final, Philadelphia 6, Buffalo 4 for Buffalo. When you drive your Jeep out of the dealership, you quickly discover that it's engineered for the cool world outside. But the best way to protect your investment is to bring it back to your Jeep Eagle dealer for regular maintenance. For advanced computerized diagnostic systems. For genuine Mopar parts. And for Chrysler trained technicians that know your Jeep best. Chrysler 5 Star Service keeps your Jeep on or off the road because nobody knows your Jeep like your Jeep Eagle dealer. McCain has got the edge. The edge on taste. McCain Elios Deep Dish Pizza has got the edge on taste. When you need a bite, try the amazing taste of McCain Elios Deep Dish Pizza. It's got a unique deep dish crust, topped to perfection, and a special raised edge that keeps the toppings in place. So there's no escaping the great taste. McCain Elios Deep Dish Pizza. We've got the edge on taste. Introducing a towering achievement. Its document handler resets originals. An auto stacker gathers collated sets all by itself. An electronic brain even monitors image quality. The new Meta DC6090 has the technology to get things done, whether you are there or not. Extension cords not included. Believe it if I told you this was one of those shows, Jerry. Why is that man beating up these kids? Please don't anybody underestimate my commitment to this game. Can we share uh, some of those stories? Well, I'll imagine it's sort of freak when I say that. Hey! But, um, hey! 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 It's not about justice in the beginning. It's about conviction. There is so, a perception. You don't necessarily think it's correct, I guess. I'm giving my feeling about Get that. inside the story with Dave Hodge. Inside Sports. Weekdays on TSN. Well, the Penguins refuse to quit, so we've got overtime ahead. 5-5, Penguins Capitals overtime coming up. Let's get to all the afternoon highlight action. First stop in Quebec is the Nordiques tried to stay alive against the Rangers today, and they succeeded. Early first, Mike Ricci parked in front. Great pass from Clark. He directs that behind Richter for a 1-0 Quebec lead early. And then the Rangers go on the power play. Zuboff takes the shot. Good job by Adam Grape to dig that puck out from underneath Thibault's glove, and Messier puts it in. 1-1. One, one. Then Kevin Lowe tries to clear. The puck comes right to Wendell Clark. He winds up and fires, beating Richter there. And a big day for the big guys. Chris Simon, big, strong, physical forward. Shows he's got a nice, soft touch. Comes around the wraparound. Mike Richter down and out. Simon gets it up and over him, and the big boy from Wawa makes it 2-1. Uh, minutes later, Rangers power play. Messier finds Verbeek in the slot. One-timer beats Tebow. It is 3-2. And then it's Wendell Clark going down the wing, looking for his second goal. Just misses on the back end, just by the post. Clark down the wing again, fires the slap shot off the crossbar. In the north zone late. Pat Verbeek has the open net. Oh, and he shoots it wide, and there it is. Pat Verbeek misses that empty net. Would have tied the game, but the empty netter is at it, and the Nords go on to win it, and they're going back to the Garden in New York. 4-2 is the final. And it was a solid physical game in Quebec today. Uh, everyone seemed to enjoy it, except, I suppose, the Rangers, who have to play one more now. Well, fancy more hockey. I bet you Verbeek's going to see that shot for all night long tonight. And I tell you, for the diehard hockey fans, what a great hockey game that was. It had great goalkeeping, both ends of the ice. Goalies did their job. 
And for the faint of heart, you wouldn't want to watch it. And if you're allergic to wood, you don't want to be involved in that game because it was a lot of lumber laid on and a lot of board checking done. Good hockey game. All right. When you look at Wendell Clark, he did it, uh, just about everything for the Nordiques today. And uh, obviously, he's a big... A big factor in the victory. Well, Wendell Clark's played throughout this series. He's been a little bit curious. On one hand, he's been a physical force. He's been slashing. He's been hitting. He's been getting threatening to drop the gloves a couple of times. Never actually did, but a physical force. But he had zero goals, zero assists, was minus six. The one positive sign, he had 14 shots on goal going into today's game. Today he set up the first goal. He scored a goal. He almost was one right by the post. He hit the crossbar. So a big day for Wendell Clark. He really helped to inspire that team. Yeah, prior to this, though, today, he did have a couple of Kovalovs, though, didn't he? There you go. Yeah, there were... <laughs> Just ahead, the Flyers and the Sabres, the highlights from the Spectrum in Philly. Heading to overtime in Pittsburgh, Capitals, Penguins, even at five. Our favorite product is a new product we just put on the market, and it's a Canadian-style veggie back bacon. Creating something totally new that didn't exist before. Long distance is a major expense in our company. The Advantage uh, saving plan is much uh, more competitive, and uh, based on the last four or five years, our price has come down 35 to 40 percent. And it save us money we can reinvest in R&D and in expanding the distribution of our product. Since the beginning, you could always depend on your neighborhood for whatever you needed for your family vacation. Even when you needed a car with more trunk space. Let Thrifty help you plan your vacation with a free custom trip routing from the Canadian Tire Auto Club. So whether you're traveling in your neighborhood or to someone else's, we're there. Your neighborhood Thrifty Car Rental, historically known for low rates. Yeah? Daddy, I wanted to eat something with you. Sorry, big guy, no time this morning. Look in your cake. Kellogg's Nutrigrain cereal bars, now mm. in peach. Looks like some little surprise from Mommy. I got one, too. Delicious crust with whole grain oats with real fruit filling and low in fat. Mm, peach. Do you love it? I do. We're having a good time, Daddy. Yeah. Can we do that? <laughs> Kellogg's Nutrigrain bars as part of the complete breakfast. Good food on the go. everywhere are having fun playing and saying Tim Horton. Oh, the Roll up the, the... <laughs> You could win one of 15 neon sport coupes. I want a neon. Win! 5,000 Sony CD stereos and over 7.5 million Tim Horton's prizes. Thank you. Roll up the rim to win. If it's under the rim, you... Win! All kinds of cool stuff. So roll up the rim to win today. Stanley Cup playoffs on TSN. Our game rocks. It certainly did this afternoon when a lot of the spectrum in Philadelphia. Flyers, Sabres, game five. Buffalo on the brink as we take a look at this one. And the Flyers get off to a very, very quick start. First period, one nothing. Philadelphia. Eric Lindros flips it to Kevin Holler. He makes the catch, then makes the goal. It is 2-0 Philadelphia. And later in the period, if the Big E comes down, makes his move, goes to the corner, throws it out in front. Eric Lindros gets his first playoff goal ever. Gary Gallagher. Here's Terry's, for him. <laughs> Terry's play of the day right here. Dominic Hansick behind the net gives it to John LeClaire. Hansick then moves the net, but that, no, it was in. Well, Europe, it European in goal. practice this. You're not allowed to do that? No. <laughs> Doug Bodger shot from the point. Wayne Presley parked in front of the net. There's a nice job of deflecting that one by Hextall. Sabres now only down 5-1. to one. Uh, late second period, Hextall coughs up the puck. Dave Hannon to Presley. He scores into the empty net. The goal he's had, well, they didn't have all great moments. It was 5-2 then. And third period, 5-3 Philadelphia. Rod Brindamore, Kevin Deneen, two on one. Deneen puts it upstairs where you want to put it on Dominic Hasek. Beats them. Flyers lead 6-3. The Sabres had a late goal to make it 6-4, but it is all over. And the Buffalo Sabres are eliminated from the playoffs. And Terry, when you looked at the Sabres in this one, they went without a whimper. Oh, let me tell you. Size, goalkeeping, they were hungry, and, and they could, the, the, right now the Flyers could coin the phrase from Charles Barkley. They could say, we're in the butt-kicking business, and right now business is pretty good. All right, Sabres become the first team eliminated from the 1995 Stanley Cup playoffs. Just ahead, Wings and the Stars from Detroit. After uh, three in Pittsburgh, well, it's still all even, folks, so we're headed for overtime. Twenty foot baskets. 
300-point games. 100-yard courts. In the future, athletes will make the game faster, farther, tougher. But today's athlete can choose new all sport. Fluid replacement, unsurpassed taste, four first quenching flavors. All sport is a body quencher. So before it gets to this, new all sport, the game will never be the same. If the choice was yours, you'd wear something casual to work. But in reality, you have to wear steel toed work boots. So you wear comfortable, lightweight Dakota Aggressor work boots with the safety you need and the all-day comfort you want. So, when work's finished, you're not. Dakota Aggressor work boots for men and women only at Mark's Work Warehouse. Welcome back. The Detroit Red Wings controlled every aspect of their series with the Dallas Stars until game four today. Dallas jumped into the lead for the first time in the series. And the story of the game was Andy Moog early. Detroit two on one here. Doug Brown with a shot. Moog comes up with a save. And Dallas finally does get that first goal to take the lead. Good effort by Dean Everson. Cruises in behind the net. Picks up the puck. Throws it out in front and Greg Adams puts it in with Mike Vernon looking for Dean Everson to come out the other side of the net. Yeah, he was looking both ways in the play. Late first period, Dallas strikes again. Power play, Kevin Hatcher from the point. This one gets through everyone. And in behind Mike Vernon, 2-0 Dallas. Dallas also dishing out some good hits here. Paul Cavallini puts Darren McCarty down for the full facial plant. McCarty is a woozy young man, but he did of course come back in this game and was a bit of a factor. Now, late in the uh, third period, Detroit blows Moog's shutout here. It is Bob Airy with the shots and Darren McCarty out front with a tip in. 3-1 stars at that point. But Dallas held on and made it a 4-1 final. So there will be a game five in Detroit. And I guess when you look at the playoffs, and you really should understand this, that there is never a sure thing. I thought Dallas, no chance, like they're done, cooked. Well, we were, we were sitting here before our show. We went on, we said, okay, uh, let's bury Dallas, they're done. Obviously, Bob Ginney doesn't agree with us, and Andy Moog certainly didn't agree with us. The simple fact that Andy made the key saves at the key time. They got 3 nothing. Andy slammed the door on him and wouldn't let them in. So they go back to Motown. Big D goes to Little D for another game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the story from Texas this afternoon. Still ahead, we've got overtime from Pittsburgh. The Capitals and the Penguins are even at five through regulation. Someone's going to win it, and we'll be here to see it. and chewy caramel. And not too sweet-tasting people. I don't see a camel in the script. I know it's difficult to understand the difference between camel and caramel. Perhaps if you're a total idiot. You eat more caramel. It's new, and it's caramel. Somebody get this camel away from me now. Uh, welcome back to TSA and Hockey Control. We're heading for overtime in Pittsburgh at the Civic Center. It's 5-5, and uh, you guys want to pick some guys who will score the overtime winner here. So this is Terry's Terry's first crack at this match. Oh, I'm, the, let him go I'm the rookie, so I get to go. Okay. I got to go with my sentimental one. I got to go with Joey Mullen for Pittsburgh. Yeah. And I'm going back to my tough boy, Hunter, for the Caps. All right, Mac. Gerber Jagger, you get the hat trick if the Pittsburgh Penguins win it and stave off elimination. If not, Steve Connell Walchuk for the Washington Caps. All right. Well, we'll see if anybody's right. I kind of like Bondra and maybe Jagger, too. Okay. Well, we'll... You can't uh, take Jagger. I just took him, so you can't oh, take Oh, I'll take Steven. Then. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Let's get the scoring summary now and show you what happened. <laughs> In the period of uh, this hockey game, it was uh, the Penguins coming back a couple of times. Bondra with his fourth goal from Christich at 7-14 as we pick up on the third period scoring summary. 
And then Yager from Francis at 8.23. Bondra came back with one more to make it 5-4 from Cote at 8.49. And then the tying goal from Kevin Stevens is fourth of the playoffs, Francis and Yager. Shots in the period 12-7 for Pittsburgh through three periods now, 30-28, and we're set for overtime. Perfect for Dan Schulman and Randy Gregg in Pittsburgh. And we're having a great time here, John. It's been a terrific hockey game, exciting end-to-end -end action, and nobody, Randy, has provided more of that excitement today than Yaramir Yager. You couldn't see two better deeks on breakaways. First of all, he has to get around the defenseman almost forward. Joe Juno gets around beautiful backhand deke, but it's not over yet. Later in the game, Yager gets the puck. He's able to come in. Bit of a flip pass here, but instead of going to his backside, he decides just to make things a little bit interesting over to the fourth side, open net. For the Capitals there, heart and soul came to play today. The captain, Dale Hunter, has had a whale of a game for that. Well, he sure has. He doesn't make it quite as beautiful, but you know what? It still goes in the net and still counts exactly the same. Here's a bad giveaway early in the game by Francois LaRue. We were worried for the Penguins because they would always be behind. Nice, easy pickings in the top shelf there for Hunter. But today, at least, the Pittsburgh Penguins battled back. Got that, not only that one, but you can see another open net goal. Dale Hunter, a great play by his teammates to feed him in the open slot. So Ken Reggett has the task of keeping the Pittsburgh Penguins alive in the playoffs. He's been beaten five times. The shot's 30 to 28 in favor of the Penguins. Down to the other end, it's the rookie, Jim Carey, playing in the biggest game of his young NHL career. The Washington Capitals have lost their last four overtime games in the playoffs. The last time the Penguins had an overtime game, David Volek scored, and the Islanders knocked the Penguins out in 93. Only once have the Penguins and Capitals met in the playoffs. It was in overtime. It was in 1991, and Kevin Stevens scored to give Pittsburgh a win. Let's see what happens here. A Washington win, the series is over. A Pittsburgh win, there will be a game six. Here's Callie Johansson. He has a goal for the Caps, too far for Kristich. Alf Samuelson gets it out. Francis Iniaga. Knocked out by the Caps. Changed already by the Penguins, and the Caps follow suit just 30 seconds into the overtime. Murphy behind there. Watched by Juno. LaRue. Ahead for Stevens. Eddie Johnston went with just two lines the last eight minutes of the third period. We haven't seen any of the faces that were on the bench for the last eight minutes of the third here to start overtime. Juno has it in Pittsburgh territory right out in front. And a close chance there for Conowalcha. LaRue. Now back to the point kept in by Cote. Behind the net. Murphy is there. Over to McKecker. Keith Jones watching him. Robitaille and the Penguins finally get it out. Sandstrom. Murphy with a shot. He's wide on the stick side of Carey. Sandstrom keeps it in. Down in the corner. McKechnie plays it for Robitaille off the side of the net. Juno's tripped up but he keeps going. It's a three on two for the Capitals. Juno. Jones to the net. Couldn't get there. The pass slid through the crease. Now way back in the Washington zone is Connor Walsh. Gonshaw. Here's Dale Hunter. Goes around behind the net, loses the puck. And Hudson is there for the Penguins. Now Eddie Johnson has expanded the bench a bit. Mullins out there with Hudson. John Sharp for the Capitals. The Hunter out to center ice. Two minutes gone in the overtime. Alt Samuelson. There with Troy Murray. He just dumps it out. Callie Johansson will go get it. With changes, the Penguins make another one. The Caps as well. The forwards change, and now the defenseman will follow them to the bench. Yager gets it down into the Washington zone. Cote after it. He's being watched by Stevens at center ice. Samuelson clears it back in. Now Stevens lining up Cote, and he hits him hard. 
Francis is in there as well. Bondra and Cote for the Capitals. We've got a stoppage two minutes and 40 seconds into overtime. Well, we've got a lot of stars in the game, and who's going to score the overtime? Well, you never know, but if you were looking at the odds, you might think about this man. The all-time Stanley Cup playoff game-winning goal leader is Rocket Richard with six. With four, there are five players, and Dale Hunter's one of them. He's already got eight points in this series. He and Joey Juno tied for the club lead. For the Capitals, how about Ron Francis? Has 12 points. So far in the playoffs, he has assumed the playoff scoring lead. And he's out there again with Stevens and Yager. Face off to the right of Jim Carey. These three players, Yager, Francis, and Stevens, have scored all five of the Pittsburgh goals. Back to the point. Samuelson with time, and he fires it wide on the far side. Murphy tees it up. That doesn't get through. Ricky to Kristich and the Capitals get it out. Back the other way now for Pavanka. He stripped and here come the Penguins. Lead pass didn't work for Francis. Pavanka with Bondra and Riki dumps it in. Hold up! The Capitals dominated the first 15 minutes of this game. The Penguins kept coming back every time Washington took a lead and they did that four times. Had a 2 nothing lead in the first. Bote and Yager Swatted back down to the Washington end. Carey leaves it. Changes for both teams. McKecker, Thomas Sandstrom is on the ice for the first time in a while. Cote blasts it back in. Three and a half minutes into overtime. LaRue taking time behind the net. Off the glass into the Washington zone get it is Ken Fleet. Both coaches after going down to about 10 or 12 skaters for the latter stages of the third period have expanded the benches again. Jim Johnson being hassled behind his own net. Robitaille comes up with the puck. Good work by McKechn down there. He's taken down by Johnson. And here comes Juno with Jones. Juno in deep. Around the net now. Jones to the front of the net as Juno gets it out in front. It's kept in by Johnson and he's stripped by Robitaille. Robitaille bothered by Connor Walchuk. Here's LaRue, the defenseman, pitching into the play. Gets it out in front. They score! Robitaille! after the giveaway 
to Dale Hunter. Washington scores the first goal. He sets up the winner. The Penguins beat the Capitals six to five in overtime. We've got lots more coming your way. We'll be back after this. invading your living room. The RCA Home Theater. Big. Bright. With powerful sound. For an experience so extraordinary, you won't believe your senses. It's where the future of television is taking you. Come into any RCA dealer across Canada for out-of-this-world savings. Roger. Play copy. When the hockey season's finally over, summer's starting. So I don't want to spend all my time mowing the lawn. The Noma Brute Multimote. It's today's answer. First, the Brute side discharges. Or bags the cuttings for easy composting. Later in the season, it turns into a great mulcher. And in the fall, the Brute's leaf back cleans up all the host maple leaves. So, when hockey starts again, I just switch from one winning mode to another. The Noma Brute. Available at Canadian Tire and other fine retailers. Cup three stars from Pittsburgh. Third star of the hockey game in a losing cause, Dale Hunter, who had two early goals for the Capitals. The game's second star, Ron Francis, solid two-way performance. And the number one star of the hockey game, Yarmir Jagger, who dragged the Pittsburgh Penguins into overtime on his sizable shoulder. Penguins celebrate the victory on the game-winning goal by Luke Robitaille, set up by that guy, LaRue. 6-5, and the Pittsburgh Penguins carry on to head back to Washington. For the best-looking garden, it's the best home in the neighborhood. Home hardware. With the best selection, the best names. Like Fast Greening Home Gardener 1755 Liquid Lawn Fertilizer with Weed Control. Controls over 50 varieties of broadleaf weeds. It's on sale now. 900 dealer buying power. Home hardware guarantees a great price. Plus, lots of friendly advice. When it comes to lawn and garden, Canada Dig Home Hardware. Great price, friendly advice at Home Hardware. To make room for the advanced thinking that went into the new Chrysler Cirrus, a big idea was needed. Cab forward design. Space for a new kind of seat that actually reduces driver fatigue. Space for an improved dual airbag system with its own backup electrical source. In back, space for another heating system and room for three. Cab forward design. Now there's room for thought. The new Chrysler Cirrus. Motor Trend's 1995 Car of the Year. Just stepping out for some air. Uh, watch out for the... Ah! Cool. Improve your nightlife with Noma Moon Rays. I like the way the light falls in the water. I like the way I don't. <laughs> Call to get the book on how to improve your nightlife. And here's another great way to improve your nightlife. Another my time, my dear? My time? Yes, mm -hmm. you might. Enter the Moon Rays over Maui contest for a trip for two to Hawaii from Gallagher's Travel and Noma Moon Rays. Details in store. Might I? Yes, you might. by Super 8 Motels, and in a game with so many twists and turns, it had to end on something like this. LaRue into the corner, the great backhand pass to Luke Robitaille, the one-timer pass, Jim Carey, and an exhausting game is over for everyone involved. The Penguins beat the Capitals 6-5 to five to force game six.
The Capitals a little quicker to vacate the ice than the Penguins who enjoyed the celebration, but they know they've still got work to be done. The Capitals still hold a three games to two lead in this best of seven. A cash donation will be made to the Coaching Association of Canada for the training and development of Canadian coaches in amateur sport on behalf of TSN and Super 8 Motels. With over 1,300 locations across Canada and North America, life's great at Super 8. Welcome back to TSN Hockey Control. It's been a long day already, but uh, there's lots more here. Let's run down what has happened in NHL playoff action so far, beginning in Quebec City at Le Colisee today. The New York Rangers scoring a, well, losing a 4-2 victory to Quebec, and uh, somewhat fitting in that one. As we carry on, Philadelphia, 6-4 over Buffalo. Dallas coming back to beat Detroit, 4-1. And in overtime, a 6-5 final for Pittsburgh over Washington. No one picked Luke Robitaille to score the game-winning goal in this one. <laughs> and and, and uh, get, get the I 20 bucks Let me Christie. do it, because I no, saw no, it. No, 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 no. I'll verify okay, it. Okay, no. But what I want to say is, I had Connor Walchuk to score the goal. Mm -hmm. Well, he, I think, caused the overtime goal. <laughs> he did a great job of back-checking Luke Robitaille up to the blue line. He took the puck off him. That's how LaRue ended up with it. But then Connor Walchuk peeled off. Robitaille went in all alone. I had kind of just kind of well chucked to score for the Caps. I think he might have cost them the game. Oh, I see. So you want uh, half want the purse. He was in on the play, but I got to also admit that Bobby had Robitaille down as his third pick in his one. And I want to know <laughs> what was Larue, a defenseman, doing that far up ice? Well, he was setting up <laughs> Luke Robitaille for the game-winning goal so that the Penguins could live another day. That wraps it up from TN TSN Hockey Control for now. But we are back in a hurry with the Devils and the Bruins. All looks to be about uh, 11 minutes from now. Playoff game night gets underway. We'll get ready for game two of our TSN doubleheader. Right now, though, we'll send you to Sports Desk, an abbreviated edition with Gina Retta for all the story scores and highlights from elsewhere.